Okay, this tutorial starts us off with the circular function. And here on our sheet we have a couple of review type material things that you need to know. Uh, most of this is in your textbook and you can refer to it on page 3, 4, and 5 uh, in, the, in Bert Thiessen's Math C30 book. Uh, mainly what we have to remember is the quadrants and the numbering of the quadrants. 1, 2, 3, and 4 as you go around. Uh, to recall what a position angle is and how a position angle relates to the there we go how the position angle relates to the six trigonometric functions again with any position angle the r value or the radius is usually considered to be 1 and then x is here y is here and as you as you rotate around the cartesian plane you would have that angle being refer, referred as with the x axis only so here we have the trigonometric ratios of that. And as I put underneath, remember that you always have to have a reference angle in there. Again, you will be working with the special triangle ratios that occur. It's quite a bit in mass C30, in fact. So there's the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle has the ratio 1, 2, and root 3 in it. And then you can derive the values of cosine, sine, and tangent, as well as the reciprocal values based on that for 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and even 90 degrees. Again, the same thing is true about the 45, 45, uh, 90 degree tr triangle, the reference triangle, and that's a one to one to root two uh, situation. Again, when you're drawing angles and making reference angles, again, if I had an example like this, this is negative 110 degrees here, um, then my reference angle that I would use is the one that's forming with the X axis and a positive X axis angle being 80 degrees in that case so and that's how we'll be using those reference angles and that's a bit of a review so some of that we'll have covered through notes and some of that we'll be looking in the textbook and you can always refer back refer back to it but let's look at some basic type of questions that can come up with in this area and I've got a couple of examples here only and this one deals with the trigonometric ratios and it's a bit of a review if you remember way back in A30 so, if a point given to us is 2, negative 2, and lies on a terminal angle, a terminal arm of an angle theta, find the six, trigon six trigonometric ratios for uh, theta. So, what we do is we simply draw our Cartesian plane here, like this, and we have to identify where that point would be, 2, negative 2. Well, 2, negative 2 would be down here somewhere. I'm going to make it a little bigger than just the squares on here. I'm going to double it up. So this is 2, negative 2 here. So if I were to refer that as my angle here, there's my theta value. Remember, I'm drawing my reference angle with the x-axis. Therefore, here is our values. There is a value for y and that's going to equal negative 2 and a value for x and that's going to equal 2. Now the value for r is going to be a combination or the Pythagorean theorem to get the value for r. So that would be simply x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So that's going to be 2 squared plus negative 2 squared equals r squared. So we do that and we get 4 plus 4 or 8 equals r squared. And r squared then, if we root that, it's root 8 for r. We can reduce root 8 down to 2 root 2. Now if we do the trigonometric ratios now, we can remember what our trigonometric ratios, if I flip back here quickly, trigonometric ratios are given y over r for sine, x over r for cos, y over x for tan, so all we can do, is, or all we need to do is plug those in. So uh, then we have values of sine y over r, so that would be negative 2, or sine theta, let me put that in, equals negative 2 over 
2 root 2, which can then be reduced down to negative 1 over root 2. Of course, we have to rationalize that, so we'll multiply them both by root 2. That's root, negative root 2 over 2. Okay, and that's our value for uh, the value for sine theta in that case. We can do the same for cosine. So cosine theta, that's x over r. And here we can see that it's going to be the similar thing, 2 over 2 root 2. So we're going to end up getting uh, root 2 over 2. And it's positive. Okay, we'll do tangent and we'll stop at the 3. Let's just do the three primary ratios. In order to get the uh, reciprocal ratios, all you'd have to do is do the inverse of each. Okay, so, or use the formula if you'd like. So let's do tangent. Tangent is y over x. Okay, so looking at y over x, in this case, negative 2 over 2. So that's equal to negative 1. So there's the three primary uh, trigonometric ratios. If you wanted to do the other three ratios, you could. I'm kind of running out of space there. And so if I were to do, let's say, for example, I was going to do um, cosecant. Well, cosecant is a reciprocal uh, ratio for sine. Okay, so I want to do cosecant theta, might as well do one of the reciprocal ratios. We have the reciprocal of sine, so all we needed, to, all we can do is we can look at sine and turn it over, or we can go to our original uh, setup and do r over y instead of y over r. r over y in this case would be 2 root 2 over y, which is negative 2. So this would simply just be a negative root 2. Okay, for that. And I've run out of a little bit of space. And in the next video, I'll do the next question here. I don't want to run out of time.